I would like to quickly point out that John the Mouse video has a large selection of videos from North and South America for your viewing pleasure. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now let's get into the cheese of the matter. Brown Johnston owned all this land and he was putting in a field to grow his corn when he unearthed the body. And instead of contacting the uh, police or anything, he just put the body back and let his cows roam there instead of putting the corn in. And he told a couple of his friends, but in 36, they would have found remains, they would have took his land. His friends on um, later in the 70s, they were going to put in the interstate between the tunnels. And one of his friends who was still living contacted the state archaeologist and let them know that, hey, there's human remains, there might need to be a dig or whatever. So they came out and did a five foot by five foot dig. And they found some pottery shards and um, a fire pit. So that gave them enough information to go ahead and do a, a bigger dig, which they did a 50,000 square foot. And it's what they unearthed uh, is what we've re recreated down here. Now, it's actually not in the exact same spot because the interstate actually went over the original village. Because in the 70s, there was no laws against private and sacred land. We didn't have those until 91. So, uh, it's about 200 yards from the spot. But uh, we, what we did was we recreated everything exactly the way that the archaeologists planned it out. So wherever there's a post hole, we put a post hole. Wherever there's a fire pit, we put one. So we tried to re recreate it to the best of our knowledge. But this village was about 500 years ago. So we do not know exactly what tribe they are because uh, there was no written history. All we know is Eastern Woodland Indians. So we just based it off of the generic uh, Eastern Woodland. So they've um, put 11 roundhouses down here and they're set, separated into different aspects of life. And it's right against the creek. So <clears throat> you can go down to the creek and you can go tour all the roundhouses and it's just pretty down here too. I just like walking around in the woods. <laughs> this is usually swampy in the summertime. You'll see these little pods down here. That's skunk cabbage, which is poisonous unless you boil it for 30 minutes and then you can eat it. But the bears love to eat it. They, um, the deer like to eat it. You can see where they've been through here eating. It kind of looks like elephant ear type uh, plants. And then we have like the ground nuts. And in the spring and the summertime, everything starts blooming. It's gorgeous down through here. I love the ground nuts. They're my favorite. But the, the bears will hide underneath the bridge in the summertime and keep cool and eat all the garbage. This palisaded, which means there's posts all around it. And it would have been woven up with saplings and and grapevines, which we're trying to get the grapevines to grow. The only thing that seems to, wants to grow there is the gourds that let it go. But it's kind of like a gated community to keep all the, the little children in and they did domesticate some animals instead of really keeping them out, you know. But you can hunt through the palisades and stuff. It's about 20 foot tall. We're just trying to get something to grow. <laughs> We've had a couple really wet springs and nothing's really wanted to so this part of the creek here is what they moved over to put in the interstate. All this stuff in the middle is what they blew out of the, the road. And then there, the creek goes on the other side too. So it's like a little peninsula or whatever. The rapids there, that's where we harvest our clay. Because we, we do harvest and clean our own clay. So uh, it's fun to do that in August. We come out and do it. My favorite thing about this roundhouse is it has a crock pot. <laughs> now see, this cooking pit over here was uh, Connected to this one by just a tunnel that was dug out and you can put a rock over the hole or whatnot to change the temperature. They took clay and they put it in the rounded out part. If you want to steam something, you put hot rocks and water in there. Or if you just want to cook it, you put hot rocks in there. Leave the lid on it and come back at the end of the day, just like the crop pot. Now we do have 14 burial pots. The only one that has any um, remains in it is the one right here. And that's the wolf grave. Um, it wasn't actually a wolf, it was a canine, um, maybe like a timber wolf canine mix, they said. But uh, all the other bones are in the Smithsonian, and all the other ones are human, of course. It is spelt the old English style, and everybody keeps telling us we spelt it wrong, but, but we spelt it that way because of the family, the wolf family, is what the creek's named after. So, <laughs> there are some plots that are outside the Palisade, and they just believe that the Palisade was built after those people were buried. Well, and some of them could have been uh, buried at a different time when they lived here because they lived here from three to seven years at a time depending on how the nutrients in the soil were. See. They did live here year-round and some of the uh, carbon dating on the fire pits were 500 years ago some of it 2,000 years ago 
So we know that they lived here at least three different times because the car was dating. So that's that's interesting to me too. Um, when they put in the BP over there, they found remains again. I kind of wonder if it wasn't, you know, associated with this tribe or a different time that they they had I lived here. But um, originally, if you would be coming through the village, you would actually come through right here, and this would have been woven up as well. It's very narrow, but these people have had about a foot, you know, shoulder span and. A man was probably about five foot two, 125. A woman's about four nine, 85 pounds. And this would have been like a, a guard. They would have had a roundhouse up top to look out through the creeks. And there's only two entrances into the villages. This one and the one on the short path. Would have been, uh, have a lower house so you could see underneath the trees. Cause we didn't have all this underbrush and stuff that we do now. See through the trees for anything that might be coming in up and down the creeks. So. It's like um, you have your gated community and you have customs. But um, the bamboo, it would have actually been river reed. This is the river reed, but it's blighted. So we had to use bamboo because we didn't want to use a natural reed. The roof is rubber, but it would have been American chestnut. And uh, American chestnut's blighted as well. And uh, we have pictures of how big they used to get. These men are about six foot tall. They're like the size of the redwoods in the Sequoia. Now, um, later that we did realize that some of these overlapped and it, was, it didn't work out quite as well. Well, then they did some more carbon dating and some of the were older were older. Yeah, because there's actually a fire pit in the walls of this roundhouse when they started digging to build it that they found it was 2000 years old that they didn't know about until they were building this. So it's super neat. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff under the ground we don't know about. But this would have been the council house or like the meat hall. Uh, anything they would do as a village, they would do in this roundhouse. We know they didn't live here because there's no food in the fire pit. 120 people would be here um, at one time. But that's about how many it was in the village. Set up with a different roof than all the other ones. They have different roofs because they just show how they would have the venting. Now the post in the middle, they wouldn't have because we have to do it because it's a state tourist thing and we have to have safety precautions and all that. But you would actually be able to lift the roof with a stick or whatnot to, and change it depending on the, how the rain and the wind. The next roundhouse is set up like a living roundhouse, but they just kind of maybe stepped away for a moment. And then the other ones are set up different aspects of daily life because we figured looking at the same thing 11 times would be boring. They learn different things. Now we have different hides and stuff and some of them do. You're more than welcome to touch them. Some people freak out about that, but you know. Yeah, but we do not kill any of them. They're donated to us from VDOT usually. If something gets hit on the interstate, we do clean it so that it's being used and not just, you know, wasted. So, um, marginella shells are only found on the east coast of the United States. I'm sure you've seen them like at be in beach jewelry and stuff. Okay, so these are like diamonds are to us. And uh, it's about 30 day walk from the ocean here. There's a grave outside of here, we call her the beaded lady. She was found with 1,330 of these in a mantle necklace and then 700 and some turkey beads. This necklace would have weighed about 30 pounds and she weighed probably about 85 pounds. She was about 25 years old when she died and they know that she wore this necklace a lot because her body was warped from the, the weight of it. She had arthritis and such. The fact that she has so many of those and then being behind the council house, they think she was higher up in the tribe, but we don't know who she was. Depending on the tribe, she could have been a wife of the chief or a daughter of the chief. Could have been the chief, depending on the tribe, but because we don't know. Yeah. It's all speculation. But um, we know they traded because we have those. We have a lot of other saltwater shells. We have uh, Michigan and um, Ohio flint. Our flint here is horrible. It chunks up instead of shards off. Yeah, so we know that. And we had obsidian, and obsidian isn't around here. That's a volcanic rock, so we had very little obsidian. That's one reason why we think they just kind of pick up and moves away because just like now you throw away the stuff that's broken you keep the good stuff. Obsidian would have been really really hard to get so we did find um, like the pottery shards and stuff and we have pictures of those and everything in the pottery uh, hut. We have like uh, some tools and weapons and such but um, this one here is just like I said the meeting hall. They would come in if they were wearing shoes or if they had like a weapon or a tool they would put it in the source pit and then you know do their community meeting or uh whatnot depending on i guess what the day was 
they did do some ceremonies in here, but a lot of them were done in the heart of the village, outside, which was the heart of the village is the fire pit out there. Uh -huh. One year, one day, one day a year, kind of like our New Year's, they would take all the fires and put them out because they had fires all the time, even in the summer. And they would clean out the hearth and they would start a fire out in the heart and then light each fire in their house with that. And they would just kind of like, you know, take any bad vibes and put them behind them, any grievances. So I think that's really cool. I know they used flint because we found it. But I, I think that sometimes they, they kind of traveled this way and maybe they brought it with them. But it's not just, it's not all of Virginia. It's just this part of Virginia, like the Southwest Virginia. It's really, really chunky. And I have some I'll show you of okay. what it looks like. It's where it freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws. It, the density of it is different than when the colder regions, I guess. But you can tell a big difference, and there's like a lot of limestone here. And somebody told me the limestone in the flint, which makes chard, which they did use chard tools, and I had some of those, that said that uh, the limestone in the flint causes it not to spark as well. But we found a lot of quartz uh, arrowheads, and a lot of chart, uh, chert, sorry, chert spearheads, and lots of bone tools. So we, I have pictures, and oh, we have replicas too hammers or axes or whatever with the, the rocks. We had a lot of those. We actually found one this, this summer. I did not put the rocks on top of the graves like this. We just put them there to show you how big the, the holes were. They were wrapped a lot in um, maybe furs or bark. A lot of the pits were storage pits. Because if you die in the winter, it, sometimes the ground's frozen and they just have to use what they could. But it wasn't like a sign of disrespect or anything. And they're just showing where it's faced and such. We know they're not Cherokee because of the way they're buried, but they're all buried different ways. And a lot of times it's just where they wrap them and they don't know exactly how they place them inside the, the storage pits. There are different ideas on that. They believe that all of the uh, burials were here before the palisade, if they were outside the palisade. Some people think that they weren't from this village or they were like excommunicated or whatever, and they put them outside. We don't know for sure, but it's just, it depends on the tribe, it depends on what was going on. But a lot of the ones that are outside, there were children. So I'm thinking that those would probably have been before the palisade. Because the palisade was behind your roundhouse, that was your part. That's like, you're the homeowner, so your part. And if it hasn't been built yet, you don't know how far out to go. And then they didn't mark their graves. So, it, and they're only about 18 inches under. We didn't start burying people six feet under till the plague. That's why Mr. Johnson was able to just scoop up the top layer of topsoil and find human remains. But, but like I said, the BP over there, when they dug out the basement for that, they found remains. Um, now, um, all of that is just blown up and pushed over on top of the original. So if you uh, were to go about 200 yards that way, underneath this creek, that's where the village is. But they only found this part because they were only allowed to do that one dig and it costs a whole lot of money and that's why they haven't done any more digging or anything we're trying to uh get them to do more carbon dating and a little bit more information but you have to sign petitions and all the kinds of stuff i didn't realize there was so much to do just to get a little bit of history but a lot of the community is land they don't visit here or anything a lot of people have lived here their whole lives have never been down here so they they don't really care we're a lot of older farmer people and they're just like, you know, leave me alone. Leave me alone, get off my land. So, um, I was talking about the flint. Now ours is chunky and it doesn't char off well. So, uh, this is from Ohio. This flint is. And this is from Michigan. Depending on what, you know, nutrients and minerals are in the ground, it changes the color. But ours, where is ours? Oh, here it is. Ours is chunky. So see how it's formed? If it has froze and thawed so many times, it changed the um, texture of it. So it chunks off instead of making that smooth, like a stabby, stabby style you want. Now, um, okay, so this is chert. Um, this is a flint limestone mixture. We have a lot of that around here. And this is a chert. We have a lot of spearheads. It's made out of those. That. And then, of course, we have lots of arrowheads, but a lot of them were made out of quartz. Um, we have lots of rose quartz through here, and that's really, really sharp, and it's easy to make uh, flint 
um, the split nap. Now I'm still learning on split napping, but the, the I, I cheat too. I try to pick uh, pieces of course that already have that kind of shape to it and break it off. But I'm not very good. I'm, I'm learning though. It takes a while. But this one here is made out of windshield. <laughs> we undid that just to show the kids how many little pieces that you have to nip off to make an arrowhead. Now this one's a really pretty one. You're not gonna hunt with one like that. You're not gonna put that much time into it. Now if it's a ceremony piece or for jewelry, you would have a, a better one. But if you're hunting, that thing's gonna break anyways. So you're just trying to make something to stab with. I don't know what that is. That's blue. That looks like stained glass stuff. D John makes all kinds of different ones. Put them down here. We just let him because he's an old man and you don't fight with him. <laughs> and that's obsidian. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of obsidian because that is a lava rock. But they did find a little here. But most of it is probably taken with them because that's really hard to get to trade for. Um, this is jasper. I'm not sure what jasper uh, is. I think it's found near limestone, I think, but I'm not real sure. I'm not really good at the geology stuff. But um, the rose court weapons, we have some of those in there. And they have a lot of, that would be used for bones and stuff too. But um, let me see if I can find a piece that John's left here. Oh. So when you flint nap, you usually have a piece of leather on your leg because you, it will come off and stab you. I had that happen. But um, we use bone pieces. Uh, you can use, well, I use antler pieces. You can use the bone pieces. I like the antlers because it has the sharp little ends. But you have to break little pieces off. And see, this is Jasper, I think. It's really hard. But you, it's, it's fine when you do the point. But when you go down here to make the part that ties onto your spear or your arrow, that's what gets you. Because you'll have a beautiful arrowhead. And you break that thing off and it's just screwed up. So you have to do it all again. But they would... It takes, it takes so long. Little nips out of it. Depending on the stone and your ah, antler or whatnot you use, it'll give you different um, indentions and stuff. If you use a bigger one, a rounded one, it'll take off uh, thinner pieces, but you'll have bigger grooves. So that's really good for like a spearhead. And I had no idea until I started working here that there are so many different arrowheads and spearheads. And it depends on where you're from and how they're shaped. I had no idea. We have a bunch of them up in the museum. But um, depending on where you're at, what you're hunting, what you're using it for, you're gonna have different ones. Chert is good for like bear and such. Cause you're gonna put that on about a four foot staff and try to make it into a bear's heart. And if you don't get it, you're gonna hope that something broke off in there to, to finish them. Or you'll have a club like made out of a burl and you just pop them in the head. I don't want to do that myself, but bears are big and scary. <laughs> Could you imagine being a five foot two and fighting a bear with a stick and a rock? Okay, so this is um, a bow drill. I uh, will not start a fire with this because I can never do it. Um, it takes me forever. But they would use a bow drill to start fires and it's, you would put some fluff from like a cattail or some briars down. And the friction, of course, causes it to start the fire. I'm actually doing better today than I have been. But there's a little bit of heat. This is like a balsa wood, but it, it works good to start the fire. You can put an arrowhead on this and it'll be a drill. So you can start your fires like that. And this is just an antler that... Um, we used to protect our hand. That's where it, the term Indian burn came is using the bow drill. I didn't know that. Ah. <laughs> See, I told you I was clumsy <laughs> until I started working here. But my favorite thing is the pup drill, which your people brought this. They found one of these on every continent. They're about 2,000 uh, years old. And they found one on the, I think the coast of California is 2,000 years old. But this is what I like. Those kids like to do it when we have those school groups. But it just uses kinetic energy. And I'll have smoke in it. No problem. But you put a arrowhead on that and that's going to be a faster. They think that the Vikings use this on their ships to follow out the peg holes and stuff. Yeah, that's super cool. 
It would have looked more like this because that's the rustic version. This one's made out of a mountain. Yeah, but this, I, I made one of these and we take it camping. It's super, super nifty. Plus people walk by your campsite looking at you all crazy. It's always fun. I like to freak people out, <laughs> but it's super fun. The kids like it. But for some reason, kids don't understand, don't pull up. Because you don't have to. You know, the kinetic energy pulls back up for you, but. John the Mouse Travel Map is available for Google Maps. It will help plan your route to the locations of your favorite videos. It is free to use. I have the link below. Please visit the playlist tab for videos that I have sorted for you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button.